Most AI videos right now look terrible. The motion's floaty and characters glitch between frames like bad deepfakes. And even when the prompt's perfect, the final result still ends up mid, and it's not your fault. Everyone online acts like just write better prompts is the fix. Like that's gonna solve inconsistent characters, stiff motion, or scenes that look like AI soup. But most tools out right now weren't built for visual storytelling. They're made to impress, not to create cohesive cinematic sequences. So you end up in the same loop of wasting hours with half working setups, tweaking random settings, and praying it turns out watchable. But just now, everything changed, and I don't say that lightly. I've made over 40 videos about various AI tools at this point, and I use these tools daily across several of my businesses, so I've seen pretty much every update roll out. But what OpenArch just dropped? This might be the biggest visual leap I've seen all year. It's called Flux Context, and when you pair it with Kling 2.1, you finally get what every creator has been chasing. Real creative control, character consistency across scenes, environments that match the vibe, prompts that feel like directing a shot, and visuals that finally look cinematic instead of obviously AI generated. Flux Context is like your new visual brain. You lock in the style, guide the design, and build dramatic, film-like scenes. Then Kling 2.1 brings it all to life with legit camera motion, smooth animation, and shots that look straight out of a short film. So in this video, I'm walking you through the exact workflow start to finish. You'll see exactly how to build detailed, realistic characters that don't change between frames and can be done in every style imaginable. Style entire environments that feel cohesive, cinematic, and rich with atmosphere. And blend your characters seamlessly into backgrounds using element to video. By the end, you'll know how to use Flux Context plus Kling like a real visual production pipeline right from your browser. Let's get into it. First thing we're doing is heading over to OpenArt. I made it super easy for you to follow along by dropping a link in the description below. Now, once you're on the homepage, you'll see create image right at the top in the main navigation. Go ahead and click that. If you don't see Flux Context, click the switch button to open up the model menu and choose it from there because it's their newest and the best model. All right, you're now inside the image creation workspace. Right here under the model menu, you'll see the big prompt box. That's where all the generation starts. And the better you describe your scene or character here, the better your results will come out. But you're not doing it alone. Just as you start typing, right here below the prompt box, flip on auto enhance. I always keep this on. It expands your prompt into something way more detailed without making you write a novel. It's super helpful, especially if you're not great at prompt engineering. Now scroll just a little lower until you find the output size section. From here, check the aspect ratio settings. You'll want to switch this to landscape or cinema. That's the widescreen format, and it works perfectly with Kling for video generation later. This is one of those small steps that makes a big difference, so set it now, and you won't have to worry about it later. Now that the workspace is all set up, we're ready to start building your first character. So I'm gonna call mine Frederick. You can call yours whatever fits your story. Now in the prompt box, we're gonna write something super detailed. And I mean really specific. That's what gives Flux Context its power. Here's what I'll write. A medieval detective with blonde long hair, big sword with a golden handle at his waist, wearing a black leather coat, with a big and wide plague doctor style hat, standing in a rain soaked medieval alley, dramatic lighting, dark houses in background. You want that kind of visual richness. It helps Flux Context understand not just what to create, but how it should feel. Once that's in, set the amount of images generated to four. This will give you enough images to pick one you like. All right, once all that's set, go ahead and hit generate. Flux will now give you four different versions. This is where you pick carefully. So here's what I look for. First, facial clarity, the eyes and mouth especially. And if those aren't clear, don't use it. Second, lighting. You want the scene to feel consistent and cinematic. So avoid weird shadows or blown out areas. Third, the character's features. Make sure they match your vision. If Frederick suddenly has short hair or no sword, I skip it. And last overall composition, ask yourself, could this frame be part of a movie? If the answer is yes, that's your winner. Once you find the one that checks all the boxes, hit download. The one I picked, this one right here, the eyes and nose look perfect. The lighting looks on point and the character has all of his features. This is gonna be our hero image for animation. Now, if you wanna learn more on how to create characters, just like Frederick, but also make them 100% consistent, even between a thousand images, watch this video where I go deep on how to create consistent characters. All right, now let's build the world around Frederick. In the prompt box, type out the world you want your character to be in. Again, be extremely specific. And if you haven't done it yet, definitely pick cinema or landscape as the aspect ratio under the output size section. This will give us the best possible space for our character to be in. I'm going to write this. Medieval city street at night, candlelight reflecting on wet ground, houses with glowing windows, 
atmospheric fog, cinematic lighting, no people, wide shot. You're aiming for tone and atmosphere here, and not just describing the visuals. We want backgrounds that feel like they belong in the same world as the character. The lighting needs to match, and style needs to hold. That's what's gonna make your scenes feel connected later in animation. Hit create and let it do its magic. Once it loads, go ahead and scan through your options. You're looking for clear architectural details, warm or moody lighting that feels cinematic, and a sense of depth so it looks like the character could actually walk into that space. Pick your favorites, then download and save them. For Frederick, I will go with this, since it has the best moody vibe to it, as well as the lights, just makes it look amazing. All right, once you've saved your backgrounds, we're ready to move on to animation. It's time to bring Frederick to life. We're now switching over to the animation side of things, and to do that, look over on the left-hand sidebar and click on videos. Once you're in, you will need to go in the image section, then upload the character image you selected earlier. I'm dropping in the one I saved to Frederick. Now let's make sure we're using the right animation model. From the drop-down menu, choose Kling 2.1. This is important. Kling 2.1 is the newest model that is much faster and smoother than older versions and it handles cinematic motion way better. All right, now for the prompt, we're going to build it using five parts. Camera movement, character action, environment details, lighting, and style. I'll walk you through an example I'm using for Frederick. Slow tracking shots circling around the detective as he examines the house after a crime. Candle lights reflecting off his sword. Atmospheric fog swirling. Cinematic noir lighting. Notice how every part adds something visual. We're not just saying detective moving, we're saying how the camera moves, what the lighting looks like, what's happening in the environment, and what style we want it to match. Now let's set the video settings. I'm setting the duration to five seconds. That's usually the best spot for smooth movement without dragging it out. Then quality here, I will choose pro, but feel free to choose master or standard. Here, everything depends on how you yourself imagine the video to look like. Now just under, you will find negative prompt, but I won't use this for now. Instead, I will use auto sound. You can use this too, if you want some background ambience. Once everything's set, click create. Now Kling 2.1 should process this pretty quick. As it's generating, here's what I always look for when reviewing. Does the camera motion feel smooth or is it jittery? Is the character still recognizably Frederick? And most importantly, does the motion feel natural? Like a real shot from a movie? If all of that checks out, you've just made your first animated sequence using AI and it actually looks good. Here is what mine looks like. Kling 2.1 really is amazing. The sound fits perfectly to the style of the photo. The camera movement looks incredible and the character keeps all his features. Now that we've got our first animated clip, let's start experimenting with styles and worlds. This is where things get really fun. So I wanna give Frederick a totally new look, something stylized like oil painting or even anime. Here's how I do that. First, head back to the left-hand panel in open art and go into image creation again. Now toggle on Omni Reference. What this does is it tells Flux Context to not just follow your prompt, but also use a visual reference to maintain identity. Super important if you don't want your character to morph into someone else. Now upload the image of your character. For that, I'm using the one we animated earlier of Frederick. Then in the prompt box, I'm going to type something like restyle to claymation while keeping medieval setting. But you can be as wild as you want here. Try prompts like restyle to watercolor with soft gradients anime style with dramatic line work, sketch style with pencil texture and cross hatching. The key is describe both the style and what should be preserved, like setting or identity. Now let's go a step deeper. Let's say I want to place Frederick in an entirely different environment, like a cyberpunk city. Here's how to do that using Omni Reference Blending. First, make sure Omni Reference is still toggled on. And now you don't need to re-upload your original character. It is still saved here. Then in the prompt, I'll type detective in a cyberpunk street. This time we're blending not just style, but world. We're giving Frederick a new setting with full environment continuity. Once it's done, I get my character in a whole new world. Look at this, this is still clearly Frederick, but now in a cyberpunk city. The impressive part is that he still has all of his initial features. And now we've just created a fully stylized, location consistent version of our character. And it's ready for animation or video integration. All right, now let's take it even further. We're gonna put Frederick inside that world we made earlier and actually animate him inside the background we made. To do this, we first need to get our character without a background. So start off by going to image creation and upload the saved photo into the Omni reference menu. From there, add this prompt. 
generate this character on a white background, then click create. Now you have your character, but without the background he had in the initial image. Save that. Now head back to the video section on the left hand sidebar in OpenArt. Once you're in, this time we're not using image to video, we're using something new. Click into element. This is what lets you combine multiple images into one cohesive animated scene. This feature uses Kling 1.6, which is currently the most advanced model available for this specific task. But don't worry, OpenArt is already working on making Kling 2.1 available here too, so it's gonna get even better soon. Once you're in the element to video workspace, you'll see four image upload slots. First, I'm uploading the character image of Frederick that we generated just now. Then I'm adding the background, the moody medieval alleyway we saved before. Together, these will form the base for the animation. Now for the prompt, this is where we describe how the animation should unfold. And here's what I'm writing. Slow tracking shot from left to right, showing the detective standing still in the rain-soaked alley, fog drifting past, candle lights flickering on the walls behind. Feel free to come up with what you want your scene to feel like, but this structure works great camera motion, character placement or action, environment detail, and lighting or atmosphere. Once your prompt is in, scroll down to set the video details. Duration, I'm setting it to 5 seconds again, and quality, I'm keeping it on pro quality to balance speed and output clarity. Then hit create. Okay, check this out. We've got Frederick in the world now, and it actually feels like he's part of it. And even though this was just two static images, the background and the character it now moves like it's part of a real movie. And what's even cooler, Frederick isn't just slapped on top. His coat has reflections from the lights and his posture feels grounded in the space. And we made this whole thing in just a few minutes using nothing but prompts and two images. And the wildest part is that this didn't take weeks of prep, gear, or even knowing how to animate. All it took was a browser, a character we built in 10 minutes, a background we styled in seconds, and a single prompt that told the model what we wanted to see. That's it. And now we've got something that actually looks like a shot from a real film, not a slideshow or a static frame. So if you're sitting there thinking about all the ideas you've got that never leave your notebook, the scripts you never filmed and the concepts you never brought to life because it all felt too expensive or too complicated, this is your green light. You literally have a full production pipeline now. Now you can start putting your characters into motion. You can try it all out through the link below. That link takes you straight to OpenArt. And if you use the code ROBOF20, you'll get 20% off your first month or your first year. And just so you know, I do get a small commission if you use it, but I only ever recommend tools I actually use myself. If this thing wasn't legit, or if it didn't actually work this well, I wouldn't be showing it to you. And it helps me keep putting together these deep tutorials so you can skip all the hours doing that research on your own. And if you feel ready to start making those high quality videos with consistent characters that look the same in every single image you make while still keeping the realism, you can watch this video next.